in the development of the seminar, it was clear this is exploratory. We really want to open the questions on, uh, on the field. Where are we with Holocaust education and studies? Uh, what does it mean to teach the Holocaust in, uh, in countries around the world by now? Because the Holocaust really has become um, a reference, a frame of reference for contemporary genocide, also for ethnic conflicts, for uh, human rights violations. But we also want to ask, what do we learn from comparing the Holocaust with other genocides? What do we learn from comparing past genocides with contemporary human rights violations? Without um, losing the specificity um, of the event of the Holocaust and without um, comparing what is not comparable. I think uh, it is vital that the initiative that the Salzburg Global Seminar took uh, is to be continued. Uh, we're really looking into an effort for several years and I'm very much looking forward uh, on behalf of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum to work with the Salzburg Global Seminar and really to address the questions that we have seen this week uh, are open. We talked about trauma and reconciliation. We talked about teaching the Holocaust in Latin America. We talked about why do we have Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism rising around the world. So I'm, I'm very glad about this initiative. And this is the first step. And we are looking forward um, to continue this in the years to come. And, and we are fortunate to have Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, as the honorary, as the honorary president of our advisory board. And he stressed in a recent article in the New York Times that this is really the time for, for evaluation where we are, uh, what we have achieved. Uh, and he also stressed that the, the sufferings of individuals in whatever genocidal context cannot be measured or compared. They are horrific in their, in their own right. And so we, we do not differentiate genocides um, to develop a hierarchy of victims. We do look at the differences in genocides to understand the tools and mechanisms used by the perpetrators. Because not only we can learn from genocidal study, uh, we have seen throughout the 20th century um, that uh, perpetrators learn from each other copy methods of dehumanization um, and extermination. And in his article, Kofi Annan very rightly asks, what can we do to really follow up on our wall never again? And I think that is what this initiative addresses in its core in the years to come. I think there are a lot of things have to be done. One, it is clear genocide cannot be prevented without the cooperation of governments who are willing to step in um, in ca case that a military intervention, for example, is needed. Right now, there are very few governments who actually have an agency within their structure that feels responsible to monitor um, genocidal threats, to, to gather information, and to be the alert station within that government. And I think we, are, we need to work on establishing a network of um, government agencies across um, the world who are really taking a closer look and who are quicker to respond. But there's also, and that of course, many of the institutions that were present here, we have a lot of expertise and, and we have seen that the, the, the public needs to be educated better about contemporary genocide, why did they happen, uh, what are the possible indicators that uh, a genocide is threatening and last but not least, it's not just the government. It's really the responsibility of each individual to look very, very hard what can you, as an individual, do to contribute to an anti-genocidal culture.